Welcome to another episode of Mike's Big Marshall Folder Exploration Journey. Now the knife we're going to look at today has been frequently requested and I've actually had this knife for a while and not gotten around to reviewing it for one reason or another. actually haven't put it to, well, maybe nearly as much use as I should have. So I'm going to kind of correct that today. This is also a knife that's kind of on the smaller end compared to some of the knives we've already looked at. But spoiler from the title, you know we're talking about the Spartan. Now remember our guiding criteria for this series. The best martial knife being, well, not only the one that you have on you when I, well, I hope you never need it for that, but the one that you carry and use the most for the most things so you're most familiar with it. So that balance of martial effectiveness and utility usefulness. Does the Spartan have that? Let's start as usual with carry dimensions, folded dimensions. How does it fit in your pocket? couple of quick visual comparisons. It is indeed a bit smaller than, say, a Voyager XL, but a bit bigger than the Voyager Large. Your grip length in this case, point to point, six inches, 15 centimeters. So certainly short enough, at least for me, to fit in a back pants pocket just fine. And we'll talk about, you know, carry and deployment later. But it is pretty wide in terms of being pocket filling. At the widest point, it's two and a quarter inches, so five and a half centimeters. And thickness, it is a bit on the thicker side. At 17.5 millimeters, which makes it a millimeter thicker than that XL Voyager. But it doesn't have all those sharp, rough diamonds that rip up your pants. So yeah, I'm not having any snagging issues. We'll again talk about that in carry. But, okay, the weight on this build is kind of surprising. We'll talk about the grip specifically in just a second. But that XL Voyager comes in at just a little over 7 ounces. This is 9.1 ounces, 258 grams, which makes it only a shave lighter than the G10 Aspada, the large one. All right, we definitely need to talk about this grip design, but before we get into that, let's talk about the build of the friendly end. And this is where I'm pretty surprised with the weight difference between this and the Voyager XLs, even though this is a little bit smaller than the Voyager XLs. It's much heavier, but they're made out of the same materials, as far as I can tell. You've got GribX hard plastic scales, and under those scales are nested full aluminum liners triad lock and then the rest of it is reinforced by I don't think it's an aluminum backspacer and I think it is more Grivex or other synthetic but I'm not sure how this winds up being that extra you know ounce and a half heavier than the XL Voyager the point of balance is well pretty much in the same place I'd actually say even a little bit more into the handle just by a shave then those XL Voyagers and, and the Espada Large, so not sure where that extra mass is coming from. Maybe those Voyager scales are hollowed out between the plastic and, and those aluminum liners. I, I don't know. Or maybe it's material taken away by creating all those sharp diamond patterns on the Voyagers. Somehow or another, there's more beef in this grip is what I'm trying to say. And with that, yeah, you get something that's a bit thicker and very smooth rounded no uncomfortable edges now i was i was a little skeptical about these kind of random scallop i guess i'd almost call them tiger stripe cuts in it whether i'd like that or not but it turns out i, I really do like the way it feels and it is indeed very grippy speaking of grippy yeah this is where we get to the rest of the design this copus style design now one concern that you might have if you have larger hands than me I've described the width of my hands as being medium, even though I have short, stubby fingers. But this space in here is only three and a half inches, nine centimeters. So it really does hug my hand. And we're definitely going to talk about that in handling and also how that feels in my impact and durability tests. But yeah, I, I think if you have hands bigger than mine, this might not suit you. 
And that is also true of the reverse grip. Now, one of the ups and downs about this that we're definitely going to talk about in terms of its performance is yes, like some other cold steel designs, I can choke up on it, get my index finger pretty close to the base of the blade and use that thumb plate to press against for close work. And that is awesome. But unlike some of the other larger cold steel folders, because of this grip shape, the ups and downs of it, the up we're definitely going to talk about is how it hugs your hand and what that does for you. But the downside is it doesn't give you a lot of choices in terms of choking up or choking down. It's really just one hand position is going to be what you get. Let's talk blade specs and design. And the first number to throw out at you, all right, I've already mentioned in this series, I haven't been putting links in the description to purchase these because the prices flex frequently. So shop around. But I think these are going for around 63 US dollars-ish currently at Amazon. So that puts it in a similar price class to what you can usually find the Voyagers for, which makes it an excellent value, especially for what you're getting. Now, like the current iteration of Voyagers and the G10 Espadas and some of the other folders we're going to be looking at from Cold Steel, this one is coming in with OS 10 a steel that my test files are saying is slightly above 60 HRC, maybe not the best steel for long-term edge retention, but it's been doing me just fine for the uses I've put it to. I barely had to refresh, rehone it. And yeah, the curves and recurve can, can be kind of challenging depending on what kind of tools you use, but you can get used to it, especially if you favor blade shapes like this, which of course looks very much like a Kukri, or well, here's some visual comparisons for you, between the Spartan and the larger Raja 2, or the smaller Raja 3. Now, the Rajas, at least the current iteration, are full flat ground, whereas the current iteration of Voyagers and Espadas are flat saber ground. This one, though, and I got this a couple of years ago, so I don't know if this is representative of, of the current model that you're going to buy. This one came to me with a hollow ground. Now, it's not a really deep, super hollow, hollow grind. And it has a nice secondary edge bevel on it. Now, I did buy this during that period that we discussed in my big Marshall fixed blade exploration journey where I wasn't crazy about hollow ground knives, but picked up certain knives that kind of changed my mind on that. And that may be one of the reasons why I bought this and I handled it, tried it out for a bit, and then kind of stuck it in a drawer and forgot about it for a while. And maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have put it to more uses. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But, yeah, hollow ground and, yeah, the curvature and forward angle of the blade. Now, size-wise, this is kind of in an interesting middle ground between the 4-inch blades we've been looking at and the 5, 5.5-inch blades we've been looking at because it does have a 4.5-inch blade, 11 centimeters long. And yeah, if you're gripping it down here with your, your index finger in that top groove, it's giving you, you know, nearly an extra inch of blade reach that we'll talk about. But with it the widest point, which is kind of hard to figure out exactly where that is because it flexes so much, about one and a half inches, 3.75 centimeters. And blade thickness, it's pretty much the same stock that we're seeing on the Voyagers or the, the Espadas. 3.75 millimeters thick. Overall length, 10 and a quarter inches, 26 centimeters. So let me go ahead and roll in the footage of my usual impact and durability tests, and we'll talk about how it did.
All right, remember where I said I bought this a ways back and played with it for a bit and then sort of put it in a drawer and forgot about it and, and maybe, maybe I shouldn't have done that? Yeah, definitely regretting that I haven't spent more time with this knife. Now, turns out I did my test series side by side with the infamous 4MAX Scout. We're definitely going to be talking about this knife soon. But these knives are kind of similar in size and weight, but obviously different blade geometries, more conventional, kind of straighter edged drop point as compared to, well, this more kukri like recurve. And the results were pretty interesting between the two of them. But okay, I realized I haven't shown you. It's not the out of the box edge. I've been using this for, well, I've cut up a lot of packaging, a lot of cardboard with this, especially in the last week or so. Done some food prep with it. Yeah, just put it to a lot of general use. And yeah, it's already been through the other tests. And the edge without any refreshment is still, um, yeah, it's, it's just fine. It's just more a matter of me figuring out, you know, where to catch that belly and recurve just right to get the best use out of it for well different things talk about that in a second here's some really thick triple wall cardboard now hollow ground blades for me often i feel them bind in materials like this but in this case um yeah not not much at all it slides through this material pretty effectively but all right let's talk about the tests First test, stabbing and thrusting in the forward and reverse grip into my Pell Stab-In, which is multiple layers of thick cardboard backed up by a couple of inches of compressed brown paper bag, paper backed up by wood. Now, there really wasn't much, well, effectiveness in me trying to reverse the blade towards me, North American buoy style, so I did most of it with the edge facing away from me. And yes, once you get used to the, this kind of dropped design of a kukri, terms of its blade shape, you learn how to get that really nicely in line with your arm for some very straight thrusting. And you've got some jimping and, you know, some space to put your thumb on the back for a good saber grip. We'll talk about that in martial handling or wrap your hand around it. But yeah, thrusting and stabbing in the forward grip and the reverse grip, very, very impressive. Made some really deep and a very wide holes in that target media. A lot of cutting action going in and coming out. So that test, awesome. How did it feel? Great. Held on to my hand very nicely, very comfortably. My hand didn't shift in the forward or the reverse grip and didn't collide with anything uncomfortable. In hand, this knife feels wonderful under impact. Well, gonna have more of that coming. Now again, my tests are not any kind of extensive bushcraft testing. They're just supposed to give me a sense of, well, the general durability of the edge and the build and how it feels translating that impact back into me. So the next test, intentionally, potentially abusive, which is hacking and slashing at different angles in the forward and reverse grip into a piece of hard bamboo. I'm basically trying to induce a chip or a roll in a fragile edge, and all of the cold steel knives we've tested so far have laughed at that test, suffered no damage, no diminishment, and same here. This recurve also really bit deep into that hard material and kind of hooked onto it, grabbed it. So that was very nice. An impact back into me, very comfortable, very secure in hand in both the forward and reverse grip. So on to carving and chopping into wood. Now I have to put this to putting, you know, put to use, cutting up a lot of packaging, a lot of cardboard. It's done better than I thought it would. Put it to some food prep and some other uses. But hadn't really spent a lot of time carving with it. And as a carving tool, this is awesome. And for a lot of that, yeah, I did choke up on it and press on that thumb plate. Gave me a lot of leverage. Carving, very, very effective. Using both the belly and the inside of the recurve. And I used the softer wood and a harder wood. And then I chopped. And this is where I really started feeling a difference between these two. Um, this one has been tested by a lot of people extensively. It is a big, solid chopper utility tool, field tool of a knife. But feel, as well as performance, uh, the hollow grind for me, for a lot of the chopping I did, it just, it just bit a little bit better 
and the grip translating that impact back into me felt better, not only in terms of being more secure, but the way it translated the impact back into me. And as we get to review this knife, there's just something about the corners down here that depending on exactly how I'm gripping it, it, it an extended impact, I, I do start to feel it and not in a good way. But again, we'll get back to that as a to be continued. So, all right, let's talk about carry and, well, my thoughts for martial handling. All right, here we are back down at the extra unflattering wintertime waistline view to talk about carry and deployment. Now, haven't looked at this yet, but you have a blackened pocket clip. It is curved, so you need a different one for the other side, and it does come in the box, at least the box I got. To reverse it left, right, there is no tip up versus tip down choice. It's always going to be tip up carry. Now, unlike the Voyagers and especially the Espada, this Clip ride's pretty high. So that's about how much you've got sticking out of your pocket. So maybe a little less visible than those other knives, but the sacrifice for that is you don't have as much sticking up above your pocket to easily grab onto and deploy in a hurry. So, as mentioned, it is, well, it is thick and kind of wide front to back, so pocket filling, but not too long to easily fit in the standard size back pants pocket. So there you go. Now you'll notice when I stick it in here, the hook at the bottom of that Copa style grip does catch on your pocket. If I want to, you know, get it inside my pocket, I have to do a quick adjustment. Doesn't give me necessarily something I can easily grab onto, but once I've got a hold of it, get it free of the clip, rotate it about 45 degrees to catch that thumb plate on the pants pocket, and deployment is nice. Basically, I'm getting my leverage by letting that hook catch on to my fingers. Now, it's not as rippy as those sharp diamonds on the Voyagers, but that scalloping does kind of grab your pocket a little bit the way it pinches with the clip. So yeah, you did notice I had a, had a little bit of a struggle getting it out of my pocket. Let's take a look at the same thing in the front pants pocket. Yeah, fits very comfortably in there. Again, on initial insertion, that hook wants to catch. So if you want it all the way in, you got to do a quick adjustment. But yeah, that really does disappear in a pants pocket. <sighs> Grabbing a hold of it, yeah, once I've got a good hold of it, deployment, very nice. As we start to talk about the martial application of the Spartan design, I feel like I need to briefly address what I'm going to call the give and take of this unique grip shape. I feel like it gives you quite a lot, more than I expected it would. I'm actually regretting not spending more time with it when I first got it, but now that I've picked it up again as I'm doing this series, yeah, I'm really appreciating its potential. What is it taking away? Well, a lot of it comes down to what I'm going to call variety of options for gripping it. Well, how much so? Not as much as I thought. I can certainly grip up nice and high on it for close work, either pressing my thumb on the plate or locking it up above the grip scale. Gives me good leverage and control for close work. That's great. Makes a great tool. However, a lot of those big cold steel folders we've been looking at allow you to choke way down on it to give you more functional blade reach and also moves your hand back away from the point of balance, gives you more authority in shopping. Point of balance is right here at the top of that finger groove. And as you can see, I can do it, but it feels about as weird as it looks. So yeah, I could make it work, but I don't necessarily, necessarily see a point in, in doing this. So I'm gonna focus on what I'm gonna call the medium grip. And I had a couple of concerns with this. Now, I've already mentioned medium width hands, and if your hands are bigger than mine, especially width-wise, they might not fit in this space, but this fits my space just fine. My two concerns were, if I'm reaching for this quickly in deployment, or as we're going to see in transitions into reverse grip, do these kind of horns, especially the bottom one, get in the way and make me fumble with it? Well, the answer to that, as we're going to see, is sometimes, but only briefly. And I think what it's giving you back is, well, worth it. Now, the other concern I had was it was going to lock my hand into a hammer grip. 
and not allow me to shift into a handshake grip, which would allow me not only to get the tip more in line with my arm for straight thrusting, but also that rocking between hammer grip and handshake grip is what I do when I'm doing those extended snap cuts. But as you can see, I can, I can do that just fine. I can get this very nicely in line with my arm, either with my thumb pressed on the back or still wrapped around it. And it's kind of like getting used to the tip angle of a kukri, but not nearly that severe. And I feel like the grip is a whole lot more secure than your average kukri design. Speaking of security, okay, this definitely came up in the chopping tests. The way this hook at the bottom hugs your hand back, retains your hand. I feel like I have a really, really sure grip on this thing. That also feels like it's increasing my leverage in the cut. So, utilizing that belly for hewing cuts, slashes, or rocking it into snap cuts. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm going to lose control of it. I feel like I'm getting a lot of power out of it. Now, Lynn Thompson himself has a, an anecdote from someone who apparently used this for real as a fight stopper. And he didn't use it in stabbing. It was the cut, apparently, that was effective for him in that situation. And I can, I can see that. I can see where this, yeah, would compete with a much larger fixed blade. But being able to get that tip around corners and stabbing or thrusting, yeah, the tip geometry into my target media, really impressive. Great penetration, massive channels in that media really cut its way in and out. So very effective cutting, slashing, chopping, stabbing, thrusting. Now, it doesn't have enough length that I'd, I'd feel comfortable doing any kind of parrying with it, and I don't feel like I have enough blade presence. Yeah, gripping it here does give me uh, about an extra inch of functional blade reach, but, but not really enough for parrying, striking with the flat, striking with the spine. doesn't have a swept back clip point for doing those back cutting actions, but I feel like I've got just enough of a point that I can still do some of that. What about reversing the edge towards me North American buoy style? I can do it. I can actually make that work. It doesn't, it's not the most comfortable thing. And it, it you know, again, it feels about as weird as it looks. But yeah, I, I could use it like that. Could also put my thumb on the side and use it that way. That, that works as well. What about reverse grip? All right, we need to talk about transitions. And this is another area where I was kind of surprised. We've been looking at a lot of big cold steel folders that had a lot of business going on down here that got in the way of my stubby fingers doing a pinch flip. I thought that would be the case here, but surprise, when I'm pinch flipping this, that hook kind of catches my fingers and thumb and makes me feel reasonably secure. Yeah, the shapes get in the way just a little bit, but not nearly as bad as I thought they would. The biggest challenge I've got with this is because the way pinch flipping changes the orientation of the edge. I am fumbling for a split second, settling my grip back in. Yeah, the, the points, especially the point of the hook, does get in my way just for an instant. But I do have other options. I could certainly do the safe same thing and just transition it with two hands or, yeah, you guys have been watching the channel, you know what's coming next, finger twirling and... Well, this grip shape and texture, the, the roundness, the scallops, yeah, really does feel great in hand in both the forward and reverse grip and feels like it's, well, reasonably secure, if you can call it that, in finger twirling. Again, I don't recommend finger twirling because it's not safe or secure, but it's an old habit that I indulge myself in. And when I do that, because it doesn't change the direction that the edge is facing, it settles immediately into an edge facing away from me reverse grip, which again, locks in beautifully. This is really secure, really comfortable, and again, I have that awesome belly and angle for slashing. And a great angle of tip for stabbing. Now, it doesn't do much hooking backwards, but I'm getting a lot of power and a lot of penetration out of that, and yeah, that grip is really helping with that. Now, could I reverse it edge towards me this way? Yeah, you, again, it, it, it feels about as weird as it looks. I can make it work, but it's just kind of hooked way back towards me. And 
in a pinch, yeah, I can make use of it this way, but I definitely am preferring edge, edge away from me. You've also got the possibility of using this nice little shape at the end of it as, as yeah, that could be an impact tool. So, impressive potential as a martial tool. Again, this is another one of those knives that I feel, shall we say, punches well above its weight in terms of that application. Plus, it has that ideal balance of, well, turns out it's a great utility tool as well, which means I'm probably going to carry it, well, more now that I've, I've kind of discovered it again, use it, get familiar with it, and yeah, this may become one of my favorites as we go forward in the series. Speaking of going forward in the series, let's go ahead and cut this one off here. If you have any questions about this knife or you have this knife, talk about your thoughts on it, recommendations for other knives to look at in the series. Not quite sure what the next episode is going to be, but I think while we're talking about blades of this shape, we probably should get to the Raja 2. Until then, thank you everyone for watching liking the videos, subscribing to the channel, following my journey, and I hope to see you back for, should it be this one?